Thanks. This conference will now be recorded. We will now uh, begin our uh, Benton County Board of Commissioners meeting for Tuesday, November 30th. Uh, I'm Zan Ogero, um, this year's chair for another month. And um, I have no particular announcements at this time other than to welcome you all to our Benton County Board of Commissioners meeting here on the uh, historic lands of the Kalapuya people um, who were displaced forcibly to reservations um, after the Willamette Treaty was signed and they're still with us. We um, seek to honor them as we make our decisions here about um, county um, resources moving forward. Um, at this point, I'll pass it on to uh, Commissioner Weiss to introduce herself and then around the room. Good morning, Commissioner Wise and Vice Chair. Uh, Pat Malone, Commissioner. Joe Kirby, County Administrator. Vance Crony, County Council. Jeff Van Arstall, Benton County Sheriff. <laughs> Erica Milo, uh, Board Recorder. Alyssa Rash, Public Information Officer. Nick Kurt, Manager of Justice System Improvement Program. See, we also have with us um, Suzanne Hoffman, Health Department Director, and Lilia Uili, um, who's uh, with the Board of Commissioners Office Special Projects and Strategic uh, Plans. And um, we have a couple of guests this morning. Uh, welcome. And um, we will next ordinarily take comments from the public. However, um, I would prefer if the comments are about citing decisions for justice systems facilities to take those comments uh, when we do that business item. Since we are not going to have an executive session this morning, uh, that should be coming up relatively swiftly on the agenda. Um, is there anyone that's here with us as a guest this morning that would like to make a comment that is not does not pertain to the justice system um, citing decision? Okay, um, then we will move on at this point um, in terms of reviewing and approving the agenda. As I mentioned, we have no need for the executive session uh, and there's nothing that we will be adding to the agenda. In terms of the um, uh, flow of item 5.1, what we will do is have Nick Kurth present a summary of where we are in terms of the timeline for the siting decision and some context for that. Uh, then we will hear comments um, and we'll follow that by deliberation and decision uh, by the board. Um, so uh, then we'll move on to item 5.2. Um, any other additions to the agenda from my fellow commissioners? <laughs> okay, uh, then with that, uh, we will move uh, directly into item 5.1. <laughs> And if you are not speaking, could you please mute your mic? We get a little bit of feedback and it makes it difficult to hear um, if there's more than one microphone on at a time. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, Erica, if I may share my screen, please. I would welcome it. There we go. Okay. Uh, a bit. Everyone see this okay? Um, so just a brief, brief summary presentation. Uh, shouldn't be any new information, but I still want to set the stage for today's uh, discussion. Um, we have some key milestones coming up, and of course, today is is one. Uh, last week, we discussed the proposed future location of the district attorney relative to um, uh, the offices in the current historic courthouse versus uh, future proposed new courthouse. Uh, today, we're here to uh, make a decision on the uh, south site relative to the justice system improvement program and 
today's date is just as a reminder being driven by the letter of intent that we entered into with the owners uh, nearly a year ago. Um, and uh, so that's, that's the relevancy of, of today's date. Uh, next week, we'll be discussing funding model for a proposed new courthouse. And then we have another LOI expiring relative to the uh, proposed West site. Um, and we'll have discussion on the 14th. Uh, and then finally, the uh, proposed nor North site, uh, we have re-engaged uh, in discussion with um, a representative uh, uh, from that uh, location and uh, we'll be continuing those discussions. Um, there is no LOI at this point driving a date, but um, hopeful to have some kind of conclusion uh, in the first quarter of 2022 um, tentatively and if applicable, depending on the decisions today and on the 14th. <clears throat> in terms of what a decision today means, uh, I just want to be very clear. Uh, if the decision is to purchase the south site today, then effectively it becomes the uh, the JSIP chosen suburban site. Um, the downtown location that we are contemplating and negotiating an LOI would still be uh, in consideration because we have not decided on the uh, configuration of proposed uh, justice system facilities, whether an all-in-one campus or a more of a blended uh, blended or split model. Uh, but uh, the west and north sites would be removed from consideration if uh, the council were to decide to purchase the south site today. Uh, if you do not purchase, a um, little bit different outcome. Um, it means that the county is no longer interested in the south site at this time. Uh, it does not necessarily mean the south site is going to disappear. Uh, it may still be available. Um, if we were to uh, subsequently down the road, uh, having exhausted our um, you know, further interest in, in the proposed north site or the west site, um, we could potentially return to the south site for a, another look. Um, that said, there could also be uh, a buyer out there waiting to uh, snap it up. Um, uh, we're just saying that at this time, we're not going to continue considering it. Uh, downtown location would still be in play as would the west and north sites uh, if we decide not to purchase today. So again, just wanted to be very clear on what the, the implications are uh, of a decision today. As a reminder, and for those that are joining from the public, um, you know, we got to this point through a very, very exhaustive site selection process uh, that began by mapping, you know, sites uh, within or immediately adjacent to the urban growth boundary, uh, sites that were roughly 15 acres or more, uh, began with a total set of 40 plus, narrowed that down to five suburban and five downtown. Um, the, the narrowing or winnowing process, we used uh, 32 weighting factors, it was all done very objectively, um, <clears throat> then employed the services of a, a commercial real estate broker to begin uh, knocking on doors to see if there was a potential interest uh, in an owner selling. Uh, some were, some weren't, some sites were already under contract. Some sites were subsequently uh, dismissed for other reasons, uh, but ultimately we ended up with uh, the four sites on our slate today, three suburban and one downtown. Uh, we did form a joint city county staff task force to really uh, do our diligence relative to understanding the uh, development implications and uh, other considerations that would uh, a company potentially developing one of these sites. Uh, the commissioners approved a negotiating team um, uh, to negotiate letters of intent, uh, which uh, they have actively been doing for uh, the past year. And uh, really, we, we spent the past uh, three and a half months uh, uh, engaging with the community uh, and sharing these uh, site locations and the conceptual designs uh, for feedback uh, to arrive uh, where we are uh, today. 
<clears throat> in terms of our public engagement and concerns and comments, uh, I tried to capture summary points. Uh, by no means is this um, a universal list. Uh, nor does it necessarily speak uh, or represent the, the thoughts and concerns of any one individual, but I did uh, review uh, many pages of notes and emails and kind of these were the, the top level uh, items. If there's something I've missed, please, please apprise me. Um, I'm not going to read through the entire list, uh, but you know, certainly safety related to the release of adults in custody in the area was, was a, a, you know, we heard universally, uh, almost regardless of site, um, property value impacts, uh, relative to the south site, uh, disaster and emergency preparedness relative to uh, the potential for flooding and earthquake damage at the uh, uh, the, the overpasses at the Merritt River confluence was noted. Um, there were concerns from uh, area uh, community members about the suitability of um, the justice system campus as a, as a gateway uh, site. Um, and there were equity issues relative to really uh, overburdening uh, South Corvallis with, with less desirable facilities and services. Um, and so just a few of the highlights. In terms of, of our ranking, I mentioned we, we had a, you know, exhaustive site selection process, 32 ranking factors. Uh, we subsequently, once we got down to our list of, uh, our short list of sites, uh, revisited those, the ranking criteria and kind of eliminated uh, all that were either redundant or didn't apply. Uh, when I say redundant, I mean that they were the, the same for all three sites, so really not a differentiator. Uh, and we came down to kind of this short list of uh, factors. Um, again, I'm not going to go through uh, every one of these factors. The commissioners should be familiar with them. Uh, but I think it's important to note that um, the South site uh, had a weighted score of four uh, relative to the west site, which had a weighted score of five and a half, and the uh, potential north site with a weighted score of six and a half. So this is kind of how things stacked up at the end uh, and even after we had done our, our due diligence. In terms of the locations of the sites, um, should all be familiar with these. Uh, west site, of course, is approximately across from the fairgrounds on Reservoir Road. South site uh, that's under consideration today uh, to the west of Oregon 99 at Kiger Island. Uh, north site adjacent to HP and the downtown site, which really is only slated uh, for the uh, proposed new courthouse, if we decide to locate it down there, is immediately adjacent to the Board of Commissioner's office. Uh, South Campus, um, we've talked about campus idea of having uh, all of the facilities with the exception of the crisis center on one location uh, would look something like this. Again, this is a test fit. This is not design. It's merely to show that the uh, site being contemplated is large enough to accommodate the proposed facilities given their their square footage um, and so uh, once we make a, a site selection decision uh, and move from pre-design to design then you will see more traditional uh, elevations three-dimensional drawings with all of the um, uh, greenscaping and landscaping etc uh, as I mentioned, we could also have a blended model where we have a um, correctional facility and sheriff's office on the suburban site with the a new proposed courthouse and crisis center downtown. Might look something like this. And in terms of, of our next steps, um, you know, here we are in late November making a decision today on the south site. We've wrapped up our first round of public engagement uh, that really was uh, began in late June. Uh, we have another site decision to make 
uh, in mid-December relative to West. And then as I, uh, as I shared uh, relative to the North site, if, um, if South and West are um, uh, dismissed, uh, we will hope to have some kind of decision by uh, Q1, uh, which is really requisite given our, our timeline leading up to a bond measure in May. We do contemplate another round of public engagement uh, next summer, likely, uh, with final funding plan and design renderings in the fall of 2022. So this is kind of how the, the whole picture stacks up. Uh, I think most folks know my contact information, but I'll share it here again right now briefly. If anybody uh, from the public or otherwise has questions, I am always available and willing uh, to engage. And with that, I will stop sharing my screen and turn it back to uh, share Ogero. Thank you, Nick. Uh, with that, we will uh, shift into public comment on uh, the site decision for uh, Justice System Improvement Program. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the presence of Councilors Hyatt Lytle and Charles Mon and um, our other guests. If you would like to speak, I would ask you to put your name in the chat so that we can uh, have a sense for how many people that will be speaking. And also um, we ask everyone to limit their comments to no more than three minutes. Zan, can you so, tell us where the chat is? Where it is? Yeah, I don't know how to find chat. Um, it's up at the very top Mine of the screen on your computer. There's a little talk bubble. Ah, thank you. you. Click on that. Got it. Thank you. Biara and Russ, if you would like to go first, please. Okay. Um, yes. So, it was it Nick that just presented? Uh, he did say pretty much all the concerns that I have, but I just really wanted to voice, uh, my understanding is that uh, there hasn't been a lot of South Corvallis representation um, in, in speaking up around all this. So I just really wanted to say that it doesn't seem like the South site is appropriate um, for all those reasons, but I, the, the ones that really um, spoke loudest to me was that that it is an emergency you know in an emergency earthquake or flooding would be cut off from the rest of the town and that um, emergency services would be not that available to our you know to that as well as to all of us i'm also concerned about the environmental impacts and it looks like from the presentation that um, this is a particularly wetland area more than the other sites and so it seems like that should be a big concern as we're trying to uh, protect our environments um, i also wanted to um well just i mean there is a little bit of that neighbors don't feel safe here having inmates released in our neighborhoods um, and then also just uh that it does feel like it's a conflict with the urban renewal efforts that we're trying to make with the Highway 99 corridor. So please don't choose this site. Thank you. And Biara has basically um, summed up my concerns too. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Councillor Mon. Thank you, Commissioners, for taking the time to um, so here, here are our concerns. Um, today, though, I'm speaking to you as a South Corvallis resident. Um, and, you know, I, I spoke to you previously regarding my concerns with the consideration of a South Corvallis site. And my, my concerns still stand. My primary concerns um, are really, you know, Corvallis is a destination for a lot of uh, tourism and visitors. And a lot of those visitors come up from, from Highway 99 heading north into Corvallis. And I'm really concerned about the image we're projecting for the city of Corvallis when the county jail will be located at just as you're entering the city. <clears throat> this affects the image of all of Corvallis, not just South Corvallis. Um, on top of that, I'm also concerned with the additional cost of, you know, upwards of $10 million to develop this site. Uh, when I think of that kind of cost, it doesn't seem like that makes it really a viable site at all. 
And then as stated just a few minutes ago, the access in a severe disaster. You know, we, we rely on our, on our Sheriff's Department and our emergency services to have access to the entire county as needed. And putting them in South Corvallis could, you know, seriously jeopardize their ability to access all of the county, not just uh, South Corvallis and Monroe. Um, so I really hope you consider other locations and not South Corvallis. Um, on top of that, you know, South Corvallis is really one of the main areas of development for the city. And as you all know, we have a housing crisis. Uh, we, we are seriously short on development and we really need to develop South Corrales for housing and small businesses. And uh, I just feel that this could impact those developments in a very negative way. I appreciate your time. Uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime you would like to discuss this further. Thank you, Charles. Um, Hyatt. get my little notes up <laughs> hi everyone thank you um, for giving us the opportunity to speak this morning um, today i have a couple hats on i'm the city councilor for ward three which is the majority of south corvallis and also a south town resident um, as a counselor i see the main commitment of my job is to represent south corvallis residents voices and when I spoke to the commission previously, I shared a groundswell of concerns that were organized by South Corvallis residents. Um, in past months, we've been meeting every weekend. Um, we've been distributing, I think, upwards of 2,000 flyers to residents. Um, and a concern was as people were canvassing neighborhoods, so many residents did not even know about this project. Um, so the concern grew and each week we had new people at our meetings sharing more concerns. Um, and Nick's presentation what basically highlighted several of the concerns we've discussed in past weeks. Um, I'm here today to talk about my concerns from my perspective as both a counselor and a resident. Currently, there are three major planning projects going on in South Corvallis. The South Corvallis Special Area Plan, which is an update to 1996's SCARP, as many of us know, um, the ODOT Corridor Study, and Urban Renewal Planning. The South Corvallis Special Area Plan is a robust update to that 1996 area plan, which had the grocery center and the neighborhoods all around it at the auction yard, as we all well know, and nothing came of it in almost 15 years. And now with all these projects and urban renewal, we plan and we envision seeing that neighborhood center coming to life. The ODOT corridor study is um, a work group that has worked this past year with the goal of trying to address safety concerns for every user of the corridor. And that's all including vehicles and freight, not just pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, we've been working to enhance safety measures to the highway and that generally will slow traffic. And so how will a justice center with more employees and higher traffic volumes impact that goal that we are looking for. Urban renewal planning includes the efforts from a grassroots movement of South Corvallis residents living South Town. And we're just in the beginning of this. The urban renewal plan includes several projects as many have already been shared, but one that has intrigued me is the restoration of the mill race area. And as we've learned more about the mill race, we've learned that there is a major convergence point at Lily Avenue of four different water sources. It includes the Marys, the Willamette backflow, and then also all stormwater drainage from Southwest Cummings. And then the kicker is it's also converges all stormwater drainage from Kiger Island area. So how will you know, we are planning for more development, but we are also 
ODOT is looking currently at how to fix this area, maybe raise the highway a bit, maybe put a pedestrian bridge underneath. Um, and it's a little soon to start just putting a justice system project out in the area without acknowledging the efforts that are taking place. So today, I just urge the commissioners to really consider South Corvallis voices and also consider that there were several South Corvallis voices in this past month and a half that weren't aware at all of this project and there might still be some out there. And um, I urge you not to choose this location for the Justice Center. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Councillor Lytle. Okay, I see that Kate has um, added her voice to the chat. Um, she was instrumental in putting together the petition that uh, circulated in South Corvallis and was pre presented to uh, the Board of Commissioners. Um, and I appreciate uh, your efforts and I would like to ask if you would like to speak. Um, I'd rather, I, I'm not in, in a position to speak today. Um, I'm just listening. I, I've had a recent family loss, so I'm just mm. not prepared to speak, but I, I appreciate your, um, you did, you, you all were able to, um, see the petitions. Yes. Oh, all right. Thank you. I wasn't sure I hadn't had a conversation with any of our group yet because of the recent distraction. Um, so uh, I apologize if that's a duplication of efforts that have already been made, but thank you. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. Our condolences. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the justice system um, citing decision at this time? Okay. Uh, with that then, uh, we will begin our deliberations. Um, Commissioner Weiss, Malone, um, please. Sure, thank you, uh, Commissioner Ogero. So I feel like this decision today is being made out of necessity due to, due to timing constraints. Um, it's not necessarily because we're ready to just choose the best option. So am I ready to say that this is the best site out of all the sites that we have? No. Um, am I ready to be 100% convinced that it's not the best site? I'm not convinced of that either. Uh, but the timing is what it is. Um, it's forcing a decision today. And that's just the reality of being an elected official. Often you have to make decisions based on the information that you have access to. So my main criteria that I have been juggling around in my head when it comes to site selection um, has been community support, upfront costs, long-term costs, hurdles in the process, um, and law enforcement proximity and accessibility to other locations. In addition, there are other factors that I considered such as, um, you know, wetlands, flooding, fit with long-term plans, um, campus capability, um, future flexibility, all that good stuff. So to go down my pros and cons list, um, pros, upfront costs. This piece of land was the least expensive. Um, other pros, there is room for a campus and future growth um, opportunities for the county, county facilities. Um, and I, I also view as a pro the infrastructure improvements and connectivity that we, it would provide for South Corvallis, that Kiger Island connector. Um, I know that's uh, a connectivity issue that Southtown is hoping for to go through to 53rd. Um, you know, I'm not sure who else is going to come along in the next 20 years and try to make that happen. But so cons, definitely long term costs. Um, and those go hand in hand with hurdles in the process. So um, as was already mentioned, there's more wetlands. Um, all the locations have wetlands, but this site has the most. So you wetland mitigation, mitigation and credits. Um, annexation, doesn't matter if the city council uh, approves it or doesn't approve it. I believe it's gonna get appealed, which is time consuming and costs lots of money. Um, 
development when the development application comes in. I would guess that that's going to be appealed to for better or for worse. Um, you know, I did consider the equity issue as well. Um, when it comes to law enforcement accessibility, um, I would say it's primarily good until you consider the flooding of the Mary's River. And then, of course, we had some challenges with community support, um, mainly of Southtown residents, the people who are closest to it, which is to be expected. Um, so based on all of that criteria, I cannot say that the South, type, that the South site is the site. I will have to say no today. Um, that's not to say that in the future, I wouldn't be willing, you know, for us to put in a bid, you know, if and when it comes on the market, if that's something um, that we have to do at that time. I'm not saying I would say no to that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Weiss, for a really thoughtful and thorough um, exploration of uh, your position. Commissioner Malone. Uh, yeah. Uh... Uh, let's see, uh, there's no perfect site uh, and uh, they all have uh, challenges. Uh, uh, let's see, I even got, got the date, uh, uh, September 21st, uh, two of the commissioners and, uh, and the ops team uh, toured the south site and the west site. And as I was standing on the south side, and uh, uh, te technically not the correct term, but encumbrances, what the city would require as far as improvements, uh, what ODOT might uh, require, uh, something about a roundabout and four or five million dollars, the, uh, the dollars uh, uh, like uh, Commissioner Weiss uh, stated, the uh, purchase price is attractive, um, but the, what, what comes with it, it is not. And so uh, this was September 21st and uh, pointed out yesterday in a meeting that, uh, well, uh, my, my thought was standing on the south side that this was not a a very viable uh, site, and it uh, and we needed a uh, another site. So I raised the uh, well. What about the uh, McFadden site that had dropped off our list in in March? And uh, independently, uh, uh, Nick Kurth had contacted uh, Tim McFadden to. Uh, restart those uh, conversations. Uh, so let's see. And obviously this was uh, before the concerns of the South Side residents uh, came to my attention. Uh, so I, I think I would agree with uh, Commissioner Weiss. Well, uh, I'll say this is the, the third or last on my list of the three sites, I would uh, like to uh, keep it as a potential uh, option uh, in the future because there's so many variables that the county is not in control of. So um, uh, let's see, and a couple comments. Councilor Mon mentioned uh, uh, jail and we currently have a jail and we're uh, we will build a correctional facility and and it's not just uh, playing with words uh, those are different uh, concepts a jail is basically where you lock people up a correctional facility is a place where there are programs and and uh, uh, efforts in at, at rehabilitation that we currently uh, um, have a hard time with because of lack of space. So, and as long as I'm picking on counselors, uh, uh, Councillor Lytle, uh, you mentioned transportation uh, issues, and, and I, I'm I, I go to a lot of 
uh, transportation meetings where ODOT is present, and I would um, be glad to uh, collaborate with you on uh, making in improvements, um, uh, especially uh, uh, pedestrian and bike um, type options. So uh, let's let's keep in in touch on that. So uh, I, I think that's, uh, oh, the other thing, uh, speaking of South Corvallis, I, I haven't heard the, much talk about the, the county's investment in the uh, Lincoln Clinic connected with the Lincoln School. And, and that's, uh, glad to say that's been built and is now in operation and I saw something about being able to sign up for tours uh, next Monday so uh, I think that there was some uh, good vision that was put into into practice on 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 that so uh, that's what I have thank you Commissioner Malone yeah uh, I would like to say that I um, don't disagree with anything that has been said by my fellow commissioners. Um, I've been looking at this from the perspective of operational functionality um, and, and law enforcement access, both now and in the future, uh, as these various locations around um, our community develop, and also the cost to taxpayers. And as they both mentioned, it's a really tough decision. There's no perfect location. There never will be. Um, and we have to work together to um, develop these facilities. We know that our courthouse built in 1888 is old and um, not ADA accessible and not in best practices in terms of separating flows of adults in custody from victims. Um, everyone's in the same anteroom. There's no private space whatsoever for attorneys to consult or for families to huddle. Um, so it's re-traumatizing on a regular basis. Um, the jail is tiny in tough shape and oh, you know, literally falling apart. Um, we patch it together regularly. Um, that said, we have great staff um, and the inmates in, that are there, the adults in custody, uh, tend to be very complimentary about uh, their, uh, you know, their experience there relative to other facilities, which is, uh, um, always good to hear in the sense of, uh, uh, because it reflects so well on our people. But we want to do better. We need to do better. And we're planning for at least 20 years out. Uh, the, the, the current facilities have lasted us decades, if not more than a century in the case of the courthouse. And we know that whatever we do now has to be functional um, uh, on so many different levels for the entirety of Benton County for a long time to come. So I, we'll get this right. Uh, we're going to continue to work on it. Um, and at this point, I completely agree with Commissioners Wise and Malone that the South side is, um, we can let it slide, slide by. Um, and that uh, we'd like to be able to return to it if we have to, uh, but we shall see uh, what kinds of um, opportunities we can create uh, like the other sites moving forward. Um, so with that, uh, do I hear a motion or is there any further discussion? Commissioner Malone. Well, I, I've got a motion if there's no further discussion. Okay. Uh, I move to let the letter of intent on the um, Kraus property, the South property, expire December 1st, 2021. And at this time, Benton County is not interested in the South side. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify with an aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, for uh, setting us up for that discussion. And thank you for all who attended, uh, both um, who spoke and who sat in on the meeting.
Okay. Now we will move on to item 5.2, um, lifting the requirement for face masks or face coverings in outdoor public settings. April Holland and Suzanne Hoffman from the health department are here with us for that. I believe Brian Lee, emergency uh, management was here earlier, but had to move on to other business. Sheriff Ben Arstel is with us. So uh, thank you and County Council Crony. Um, so I'm not sure who is leading, whether it's County Council or April or Suzanne. Uh, well, I guess I can start um, and then I will happily happily pass this on to Suzanne or April. Um, as, as you all know, the state um, Governor Brown's office, OHA, um, took a step away from some of the mask mandates last week uh, by removing the requirement that if social distancing of no less than six feet could be maintained, masks in the outdoor setting would not be necessary. Um, our last resolution back in middle of August contained a mandate for masks indoors and outdoors where physical spacing of six feet could not be maintained. Obviously, once OHA went away from the outdoor mask requirement, our resolution diverged from state uh, guidelines. We have been very diligent in the last 22 months about aligning with the state so as to present the minimum amount of confusion and uncertainty amongst our residents. April and Suzanne both uh, agreed, well, well, I'm not gonna say they agreed, but they recognized the state's position and also recognized that by presenting a resolution that removes the outdoor mask requirement keeps us uh, aligned with the state of Oregon. And that's all this particular resolution does. It removes the outdoor mask requirement. It maintains the indoor mask requirement. It does nothing to the current declared state of emergency, which runs through December 31st, which is a whole different conversation, which uh, I believe uh, Joe uh, and the executive team will be beginning that discussion tomorrow. But right now, this is just a presentation of a resolution that lifts the outdoor mask requirement. Have I said everything that needs to be said, April, Suzanne? Thanks. I, I would like to add just a couple of things if it's okay. So we know that the risk in outdoor settings is less than in indoor settings. And the context in which we applied this outdoor mask mandate was a time in which our hospitals were were on the verge of being really severely uh, overwhelmed. Uh, cases were absolutely uh, skyrocketing. Um, and uh, we wanted to put everything into place that we possibly could. Now, uh, the an outdoor mask uh, requirement should be removed before an indoor mask requirement due to the that change in uh, the difference in risk. Um, I feel that with OHA's move, it's a it's a good time to to consider that if the board agrees. Um, also, evaluating our our data, uh, we want to make evidence based decisions and. Uh, the truth is we haven't documented large numbers of cases associated with uh, crowded outdoor settings. Um, so given those those pieces of information, I feel that uh, that moving forward, uh, our public health recommendation would be to uh, remove the outdoor part of the, the mandate. Um, I, can't let this go by without saying this does not mean that the pandemic is over or the worst is behind us. We've got a lot of new and emerging threats uh, that we are keeping a really close eye on. Uh, however, uh, we haven't seen outdoor uh, related cases really um, uh, bloom as we have uh, indoor and household settings. So, um, yeah, that's that's the background there. And one other thing to 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 also just distinguish from what Vance said, I'm actually okay with diverging from the state recommendations um, as a public health professional. If we have a situation here and we if if we felt it was important for us to continue with an indoor or an outdoor or whatever masking requirement, then um, I'd still make that plug. 
Thanks. Thank you, April um, and Vance. Uh, questions for Commissioners Wise and Commissioner Malone? Uh, no um, particular questions, but I, uh, uh, I I think it it it, it helps when we uh, I'll, I'll disagree with April a little bit and agree with Vance, which I really hate to do, but um, uh, it's uh, I, I think having a consistent message for as as large a region or an area just helps. Uh, I think it was June of 2020 and uh, take face masks off and then uh, a few weeks later put face masks back on. And and so uh, I think it's important to have a, a consistent um, message. Uh, and But I'll agree with you, April. Uh, I, I think throughout this uh, pandemic we have been uh, trying to make decisions based on based on the facts based on the evidence uh, which is you know, ever changing but uh, to to try to have that as our uh, basis for our uh, decisions and I, I think uh, uh, through the health department's efforts and, and giving us good information that, that uh, I think Benton County has done relatively well. I will uh, compare our statistics to uh, maybe a neighboring county uh, across the river, and uh, we look we look pretty good. It, it would be great if our numbers were uh, e even lower, but I, I think um, I think we've done a good job listening to you folks and, and responding accordingly. So I guess I would encourage you, encourage you to keep the good information coming to us so we can um, make informed decisions. Thank you, Commissioner Malone. Um, thank you to the health department and to all of our wonderful staff who kept us up to date to maintain the great data that we have on our website um, that allowed me to um, have a good sense for what's going on. Um, I, I greatly appreciate how well you keep us up to date. Um, so with that, um, is there, okay, Commissioner Wise. I just had a clarification um, and I saw a string of emails before and I don't remember the answer, but so we are removing the mandate. Are we still making a, are we still recommending uh, that we, well, I forget the wording, it's still a recommendation to mask outside if you can't be six feet away or are we just dropping it all together? Vance, I can't remember in the final, in, in the draft, I, I made a, a, a suggestion to have it be a recommendation. Um, I'm not sure what the actual order says. And I'm looking at it right now. Uh, it, it, it just simply drops the requirement that uh, outdoor masks be required outdoors. So it is not a recommendation. It is just simply eliminating the outdoor masking requirements uh, with no recommendation. Keep in mind that order still does maintain requirement for indoor masking. Great, thank you for clarifying. Um, and. Thank you, April, for all of your information, for everything that you said and that Vance said, you know, based on the guidelines and based on the current data, um, I'm happy to support this. Do I hear a motion? Let's see. Yes. Um, I move to uh, approve order number D. 2021-079, uh, lifting the requirements for uh, masks or face coverings in outdoor uh, public settings. Second. All in favor, please signify with an aye. 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 Okay. Thank you.
Um, and I would also like to, uh, again, shout out to uh, both um, Good, Samaritan Regional, uh, Good Samaritan Regional Medical Center and to OSU, who've been consistent partners in this effort, um, both in terms of vaccination and in, uh, in terms of policy um, with respect to COVID mitigation, and 509J school district, the other school districts, um, and the pharmacies that we work closely with as well. So uh, with that, I believe we are done with this agenda item. And uh, unless there's other business, we are will conclude this meeting for today. Uh, just a, a comment uh, agreeing with or taking along with Commissioner Weiss's. Uh, uh, it, it's fine if you if you want to wear uh, masks out in outdoor gatherings. Uh, th that's wonderful. That uh, this just removes the requirement. If if you feel like you're uh, health is at all com compromised and, and uh, wearing a mask outdoors uh, makes you feel better or maybe does some good, uh, that, that that's just fine. And so, um, but uh, the effort today is just removing the requirement. Thank That's you for all. that, Commissioner Rollo. Um, with that, um, this meeting of the Board of Commissioners is now adjourned at 9.51 a.m. <laughs>